Hey guys, what's up? I'm Ella and I have a really exciting video today because I'm going to be talking about the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 3. So I was super excited to receive this and to play with it because I've actually never even touched a folding phone in real life before. And honestly, this thing just looks so adorable. Now my daily driver is actually the Galaxy S21, which is Samsung's non-foldable flagship phone. So in this video, I will be reviewing the the Galaxy Z Flip 3 from my perspective as an S21 user. By the way, I did make an unboxing and first impressions video about the Z Flip 3. So if you want to check that out, then I'll have it linked down below. And also I know I usually make a customization video as well, but for this one, unfortunately I don't have enough time, but I did make a customization for my S21. And honestly, internally, these two are very, very similar. They both you know, run Android, one UI. So if you just got a Z Flip and you want to customize customize it, then I'll also have a customization video linked down below. One last thing before we start is a quick disclaimer. So this is a review unit that was sent to me from Samsung. However, Samsung is not sponsoring this video in any way and all opinions are of course my own. And with all that being said, let's just get into it. All right, so when I first saw the Z Flip 3, I just thought it looked so adorable, especially when it's folded like this. The design of this is like very minimal, but still elegant, which is the exact style that I like. Now, this one that I have is the cream color, but there are many other color options like lavender, green, and pink. And I actually did get to see some of the other colors in real life. And after doing so, I think the cream one looks the best. I used to think that I would like the lavender one the most, but honestly, I think the cream one is just the best out of all of them. So I'm really glad that I got the cream one for review, but there is one thing that I don't super love about about this design and it's that the back is super glossy so it tracks fingerprints pretty easily. I would prefer a more matte finish and I think that would also help it to track fingerprints less but the back is Gorilla Glass so it's nice and durable and will not get scratched easily. But the part that I am most impressed with with this phone is actually this hinge area. So no matter which angle I bend it to it's able to hold that position so the hinge feels super solid. Also, whenever I either fully open it or fully close this phone, it gives like a nice satisfying and tactile snap. And I also noticed that this hinge area is designed in a way that makes it pretty much impossible to catch your finger in it. So when using this foam, you won't have to worry about experiencing any painful surprises. And the two sides of the Z Flip 3 are actually sealed separately. So now this phone also has an IPX8 water resistance rating, which is certainly very good news. It helps to make this phone less fragile. And now I want to talk about this screen because it was definitely problematic in the previous generation, but with this current generation, I think Samsung definitely made some big improvements. So the screen actually has a pre-installed screen protector on it, which is supposed to help make the screen more durable. And overall, I think the screen feels pretty good pretty solid, even though it is not Gorilla Glass. Now, my S21 does have a Gorilla Glass screen, but I actually think that these two screens feel quite similar in texture. The Z Flip 3 screen does feel slightly more soft, but overall, it definitely doesn't feel flimsy. The screen protector certainly does help to protect it more, but I think you should still treat it more carefully than other phones because at the end of the day, it is not glass. Okay, and now as for the crease, so even though it is quite faint, you can definitely still see it in daily use. And especially in bright environments, if it catches the light, then it can get super bright. And then you'll just have to kind of like shift the phone to an angle so that it doesn't catch the light. And in the first few days of using this phone, seeing the crease did kind of bother me, but I feel like I got used to it after a bit. I find that if I'm focused on the content on the screen, then it's actually pretty easy to just ignore the crease. 
So for me, the crease is not a deal breaker. I think I can live with it. There are definitely things about this phone that can be deal breakers, which I will get to later on in this video. Okay, and as for the rest of the screen specs, it has a 6.7 inch display. So it's just slightly bigger than my S21. Um, it's not wider, it's only a bit taller up here. But just like my S21, it has an OLED screen with a 1080 resolution and also a nice and fast 120 hertz refresh rate. So so as I was using this phone day to day, I began to experience some advantages and disadvantages of this flip design. And I'm going to list them out so that you can decide whether or not this flip design is suited for you or not. And starting with the advantages, the first one definitely is the cover screen. It is 1.9 inches, so it's decently big and it shows the time, the date, and the battery. You can also customize the clock styles. And right now, I actually have the cover screen clock style matching with my Galaxy watch face. I thought it would be cute to match them. And also, whenever you get new notifications, this orange dot will appear, and then you can swipe towards the left in order to check your notifications. I think this certainly makes checking notifications super quick and easy, so I do really like this feature. And then when you swipe towards the right, you'll actually see the widgets, and these are all of the available widget options for the cover screen. There isn't a lot, so I do wish there were more options, but right now I have the weather widget, a timer, and also a music player widget. And I actually do use these three widgets pretty often throughout the day, but that's actually not all that the cover screen can do. It can also act as a little viewfinder for taking selfies with the back camera. And this actually leads me to the second advantage of this flip design, and it's that you can use the back camera in order to take pictures of yourself. So in order to enable the little preview on the cover screen, all you have to do is open up the camera app and then tap on the little icon up there, and then you'll be able to see the preview. But for me, I actually don't super care about this advantage because I don't really take pictures of myself that often. Unless I'm filming a YouTube video, I'm actually usually just behind the camera. But if you do like to take a lot of selfies, then this could definitely be a great feature for you because the back camera is certainly a lot better than the front camera. And I think the cover screen preview is big enough for you to be able to frame yourself properly in the shot. But you can actually activate the cover screen preview without even having to flip open the phone. You can actually just double click on the power Power button and then you'll be able to see the preview and through this you can take photos and videos using just the cover screen. However, there is one weird thing about this and it's that both photos and videos taken in this way comes out as a square. I don't know if this is a bug or something. I don't really like square photos so I'm hoping that a future software update will fix this issue. Okay, and the third advantage is that when this is folded, it is very very small, so it's very pocketable. This is a feature that I've seen many people highlight, but I actually don't think it's a huge advantage because I really don't have any issues pocketing my S21. So even though it is nice that the Z Flip 3, when it's folded, it is like half the size of my S21, but it's not really necessary for me. And the very last advantage that I'm going to highlight is of course, you can sit it on the table just like this. It doesn't need anything else to support it. So when you're making a video call or watching videos, then you can be completely hands-free and just chill. All right, and now moving on to the disadvantages. And this first one is the biggest one and it's kind of a deal breaker for me. And that's that when it's in folded form, this phone is not really usable aside from just checking some notifications. The Z Flip is not like the Z Fold where you can use it even when it's in folded form and then when it unfolds, it becomes like a mini tablet. With the Z Flip, you kind of have to unfold it in order to use it and you actually cannot easily unfold it with just one hand. I even practiced trying to unfold it with just one hand 
And it is possible, but it's kind of awkward and definitely takes a while. So even though this phone is narrow enough to use it with one hand comfortably, you still do need two hands in order to open it, which at first doesn't sound too bad. And I only realized how problematic this two hand requirement is one day when I was waiting for the elevator while carrying some groceries in my other hand. I wanted to check some messages while I was just standing around and I struggled really hard trying to open this phone with just one hand. I use my phone very often throughout the day. I'm taking pictures, replying to messages, checking Instagram and YouTube, and having to fold and unfold this phone every single time I use it is actually kind of a hassle. The first few times that I'm folding the phone feels pretty cool because I'm literally bending a phone, but by the 10th time that I'm doing this in a single day, the novelty kind of just wears off. Now, of course, you can argue that I could just leave the Z Flip in its unfolded state, but that would kind of just defeat the whole purpose of the flip design. And also because the inner screen is quite fragile, it's probably not the best idea to always leave it in its unfolded state. And for me, this is actually the deal breaker. This is the main reason why I don't want to switch to a folding phone as my main driver. Okay, and the other two disadvantages are more minor, but they are certainly still disadvantages. The first one is that it has one less camera than my S21. The Z Flip only has two cameras, a regular one and an ultra wide lens, whereas my S21 has three, a regular ultra wide and zoom. And the other disadvantage is that the Z Flip 3 is not rated for dust resistance. So again, that just adds to its fragility. All right, and now I want to really quickly talk about the two cameras of these phones and do a quick comparison. So I went out and took a bunch of photos using both of these phones. I used the regular lens, the ultra wide lens, took both photos and videos, even did some portrait and night modes. And the conclusion that I've reached is that the two cameras are very, very similar, which is not very surprising because these two should have the same specs. Now, zoom pictures from the S21 do look better than from the Z Flip, but that's because the Z Flip literally doesn't even have a zoom lens. But interestingly, I think the portrait mode on the Z Flip is better than portrait mode on the S21 because on the S21, it actually punches in, whereas on the Z Flip, it doesn't. So I think with the Z Flip, you'll have more flexibility when taking portrait. All right, so that's going to be it for this Z Flip review video. I'm really glad that I got a chance to play with this product. Definitely satisfied my curiosity around folding phones. And overall, I would say that if you really like the unique advantages of a flip phone and you don't mind the disadvantages that also also comes along with it, then I would say go for it. The Z Flip is certainly a very good and solid phone, and I think the hardware is pretty mature now. For me, the flip form factor doesn't really offer many meaningful advantages, while the inconvenience that it brings can be felt in daily life. So that's why for now, I'm going to stick to my non-folding S21. I find it a bit more practical to use a non-folding phone, but do let me know down below your thoughts about folding phones and whether or not you would use it as your daily driver. And that's going to be it for this video. If you enjoyed it, then please give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel down below. I have many links down below, my Instagram, my filming setup, my regular setup. So if you're interested in that, then be sure to check out the links down below. And I really hope to see you in another one of my videos. Bye.